the draft looks like. Okay, well, we've already got the Nautilus here for Unicorns of Love. So there's some tankiness. There's some CC. There's some easy target access there by allowing yourself to just throw anybody up into the air with a point and click. And we'll get the Kai'Sa next to it. So instantly going for both bottom laners here for UOL. Yeah, so I want to see, it, you know, Predith and Decoy have actually had a pretty large champion pool. They've gone towards Kogma Lulu in the past. I don't expect that to be the case here, but just saying that they can make use of this double counter if they, if they want to. Galio being the pick, we're already scrapping. I love this hover. Ooh, do you think they'd... Yeah. Okay, we got it. It's Samira locked in for Pentanet. They I, are going yes. for that solo Q special, baby. And they already have the Galio to, to, to wombo with that in the team fight. If it's the Nidalee diving through, if it's the same with, uh, of course, her as well and Samira, Galio is going to be able to follow. I want to see what the, the primary engage looks like for this team because I do want to see a better delivery system. Nocturne gets locked in. We don't know where that's going. Right. We've always said that it is a great triple flex for his top, mid, and uh, jungle. And I respect No Man's enough to be willing to play something like this. And I love seeing that kind of a flex as your last pick before we get into the second half of the bans because it means that you could trick your opponents into just banning some completely worthless junk yeah. that you were never going to play anyway. Yeah, it always feels bad. Never want to split bans too for different lanes. You want to make the best effective use of it. And so if you're a... Uh, you know, uh, Pentanet, you're looking across the board and saying, well, they do need to still pick. We want to force the Nocturne maybe to be a jungler. Mm. Maybe just start banning jungles, because you already look towards the uh, jungle bans that already exist. It's the uh, Udir, the Rumble, uh, the Morgana as well. They've levied a lot of jungle bans, so you can pile on top of that and make it difficult for uh, Ananasik to get the best option in a 4-5. Well, we've got the Karthus and Renekton banned away as the first couple here. So one ban left for either side. Urgot banned away by the side of Unicorns of Love. So they are targeting the top lane here. Orianna will be the last ban of this draft. All right, so they're still splitting it. And uh, we'll say, though, that the Galio is also a flex. It could be a mid lane. I would like it for it to be a support. Uh, I think it has a lot of great defensive options versus, like, let's say the Nautilus, if he hooks him in. You know, you can get a taunt and you can still find a way out. So I think that's the better option. If you put it mid, there are just way too many mid laners that can punish you. Forgot about the Lee Sin pick. Oh, baby. Unicorns of Love locked that in there for themselves. All right. So now we've got Lee. We've got Nocturne. They can swap back and forth however they want to play these for whatever feels the most advantageous. Good Lord, Lord man. 71% win rate. I might say that Lee Sin's pretty strong in this current meta, Raz. Pretty broken. We saw what Armit was able to do in the top lane where it gets a solo kill versus Camille. It's just such a strong champion in this iteration. So difficult to, like, honestly build against him in lane. Getting the set pick now, I think that, once again, it still could go anywhere. Um, it could be a support set, could be a top lane set. We'll see when the full draft comes out. They have to lock it in here. Oh, come on, lock that in. Yeah. Lock that in. Pick that. Zed or bed? Zed or bed? Probably bed, but you know, no, 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 no. Zed, Zed or bed? We're staying awake. We're staying awake, guys. Come on, lock it in. Lock it in. Lock it in. Yeah, baby, oh. we got the Zed. You said that there was probably gonna be bed. No, that is a Zed. Hell yeah. Unreal. Pentanets throwing everything at them. When they started out in this tournament, and we got to see the fiddlesticks for Pabu, I was like, how deep can this team go? And we're seeing it here. That's going to be a Zed for Chaz. He's going to Chaz it up here. Okay, we've got the Zed locked in. So we know that that's going mid. We still have to see which one out of set. And Galio might go support or top. Granted, top lane Galio is pretty rare. So I doubt you're going to see that. It should be yeah. Galio in a support role. You got set up there in the top lane. Over here on the side of Unicorns, last pick of the draft is Vlad. So it'll be Nocturne top against set. You've got Lee Sin versus Nidalee in the jungle. This is like the one of the classic jungle matchups whenever the jungle meta has always been fast paced. And then you've got Vlad versus Zed in mid. This is just, I'm going to say it again. I know we've said it too many times and I want to hear it. I want to make it so quick shot can hear it. A full send dive. <laughs> you guys are just bullying lot. him at this point. Absolutely. He's way too old. He needs to learn. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a great dive composition from Pentanet on towards Unicorns of Love. So I'm looking at Lodic. I'm looking at No Man's. They have, a, you know, some good defensive mechanisms. And also, like, Kaisa doesn't actually need to be there at the beginning of the team fight. She has an ultimate to bring her right in. Yeah, buddy. To find the pick. So, like, I still think their comp is fine. Pointing at him. 
give him the fist bump. Oh, oh fist there we go. There we go. All right, Raz, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who won the draft? Uh, Who won the draft? Give me a name. <laughs> Unicorns of Love. <laughs> Unicorns of Love. Okay. Yeah. He's saying Unicorns of Love. I want to see Zed get 15 kills or something. This is a kind of champion that I love to see. It's high risk. It's high reward. Yeah, it doesn't get picked most of the time because it can't wave clear and stall and do that kind of resident sleeper stuff. But he does all the things that make you excited to watch League of Legends. And I love the fact that in their elimination match, Pentanet just locks it in. That is just the most Chad play. It is. Like, this is literally the most hype game it can be for Pentanet. It's the most important game it is for them. If they lose here, they just lose the head-to-head -head versus them. So like, you know, in a tiebreaker situation, uh, this is as bad as it can get if they end up losing. So for Pentanet, you must, they must have practiced this. I'm not gonna just say that they just threw this on, uh, you know, on for stage purposes. Chaz has, once again, a, a large pool. I wanna see what all that practice has culminated to. What does it look like, Pentanet? Show the world. So, all right, Raz, here's my, I, I'm going, to, I'm putting on my, my tinfoil hat and I'm going down the rabbit hole of trying to to solve this here. Because right. you say they must have practiced it, right? Absolutely. I saw a thread, I can't remember if it was on Twitter or Reddit, it was on some of that social media stuff, whatever, about how go. the Pentanet players were talking about, you know, in in OS, you're kind of separated from everybody else. It's harder to find scrim partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so they talked about after they won, after they qualified for MSI, they're just like, well, we're just playing solo queue for a few weeks mostly. So that means that they couldn't have scrim partners be like, nah, nah, remake draft. Zed's not a real pick. Come on, take it seriously. They just go play Zed in solo queue for 50 games, and all of a sudden you got your Zed practicing. Maybe if this ends up being the smurfest pick of the whole tournament so far, it was their weakness that actually became their strength. Get in the lab, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> this Get is my the theory. Field. This is my theory. Worth noting, that I never even made it to Masters, so I'm not that smart, so my theory's probably wrong, so... Uh, I, at the end of the day, they still ended up getting uh, scrims, albeit very late, so, you know, learning l the meta as it goes. And also, just if you ever, you know, talk to any of the p uh, people on Pennanet, they always have, like, a very open mind uh, when it comes to drafting. Uh, you know, when can we play something that's definitely off-meta, more seen? And in this case, Zed is pretty happy because he has a set, a, a, a Nidalee and Galio, like in, in terms of damage uh, damage profile, it mm. is diversified for the time uh, for the side of Pentanet, and also they can just straight up dive. And, and their options are decent. Uh, the Kaisa, as I mentioned earlier on, Lee Sin can be an option. It's just very difficult if I look towards Nautilus, who's a great lockdown, uh, Vladimir, who can also just be in and out of a fight. We didn't even get to talk about Vladimir. He received yeah. quite a few buffs and also item buffs, like. Ability Haste does so much for him, and the cooldown reduction that he got from the, uh, the the specific buffs to the champion make him just a demon later on in the team fights, weaving in and out of fights. Uh, so definitely watch out for Vladimir if the game goes long. Also, do want to point out Electrocute for Vlad as his keystone. I know that Phase Rush is often the team fighting rune for the champion, makes him scarier in those late game situations when he can just run in there and move at 12,000 miles per hour and stick to a target. But Electrocute will allow him snappier trades, yes. more powerful, quick trading instances for the laning phase to make sure that he can survive against Chaz a little bit better and have a bit more of a fighting chance here early on. This is all for the Elite 500 fans out there. You know, get yeah, your yeah, dose yeah. That's Vladimir. literally where that's literally where I learned these rune differences. I read his Vladimir doc. There we <laughs> go. Learn from the best out there. Don't expose me, Raz. I'm trying to pretend that I'm smart out of my own brain. Just All study. right. All right. Let's see where our where our junglers are. They're both in the bottom half of the map. I'm excited for this jungle matchup in particular because Lee Sin versus Nidalee. I already said it's a classic. Both of these champions can completely take over a game or be utterly useless if they can't hit their skill shots. It's so much of a skill check against each other. It's so much of a skill check whenever they go to gank. I love to see it. Oh, this looks like it could be a gank setup. No, it's just going to be Santos solidifying Scuttle Crab here for Nidalee. They have to fight for this, but now this is going to be oh. a bad situation for Pabu. He's going to get double scuttled. Yup, Ananasik's got the faster path to the topside river. They've got control over every single lane. They had the rotations there first. Nocturne's already going over to the crab, just getting it leashed for him. Says, here you go, sir. See you again soon. Yeah, Man, is that is some fantastic VIP service right there. <laughs> really well played. The entire team recognized that. This is just the difference between Nidalee going full clear 
Wool camps and going straight on towards Lodic. Yeah, Lodic down to 250 HP there as they go in. Decoy spinning both summoner spells, getting both of Lodic's in return. Yeah, thankfully for Unicorns of Love, Pabu's already topside, so he's not going to be there for a possible dive, but Boss has to watch out here. Okay, Boss takes pretty much no damage from that Haymaker that had nearly zero grit on it, so it doesn't matter too much. Boss trying to stand and fight here, just gets the better of Pabu early on, but now that Ananasic shows up, Pabu's forced to flash away. Boss insta spell shield that one. He expected Pabu to be here there. That was actually just beautiful. And then full ch uh, just uh, challenged Nidalee there, recognizing that Ananasik was going to be in the area. Well done from Boss there to turn it on. Pabu, he loses his flash. Pabu now without the flash. We'll see if that gets punished as we move forward. Down here in the bottom lane, Lodic and Santas are able to get this wave crashed into the turret and then get themselves back. So we'll see Praetith get back into lane in time to pick up that cannon minion. Yep. Tons of extra CS here available for him to collect as long as he's able to last hit it properly. And that'll mean that our farm is actually pretty even in every lane. Yes. I mean, mid lane's a four, three maybe now difference, and that was the largest one. So very even laning here in the first five minutes of this game. And good news for Pentanet because of how their bot lane has been doing. They got the first base off, and they're going to be able to slow push the second wave coming back in the lane. This means that Nidalee has the opportunity to go for the first dragon of the game. It just depends on if she wants to do that or if she just wants to prioritize her clear here. It seems like uh, if I'm just looking at the minimap, wave is going to be crashing. Nilly might not be starting it and just want to see what they're going to be doing with their time. At the very least, that means that Scuttle Crab should be picked up. But Santos is here ready. And also, yeah, Pabu is way too low. So this is not going to be a challenge that I was expecting. That means that Nil the Lee Sin should be the one picking up the Scuttle Crab. Yeah, you also saw a couple of assist me pings in the blue color there on the minimap. So, and that was around mid lane. So Pentanet knows that mid might have some issues here sometime soon. No man scaling up on the Vladimir, already level six now. Remember that Vladimir's early laning phase is often pretty weak by considering the fact that Transfusion just has a really long cooldown early on. Once he hits level seven, it starts to feel comfortable. Once he hits level nine, yeah. it starts to feel really good. Get your full rank up on your Q, so you're going to tr be trading a lot more effectively. Uh, and also, I just wanted to see what the pick, the idea is going to be going up against Chaz. Has Ignite, has his ultimate, can look for a play if Decoy is in the area with his ultimate for a full uh, gank on towards No Man's. Yeah. But just taking a look at what Unicorns have been do Love have been doing towards the bottom side of the map, they just had full vision there. So it's nice to see that Pentanet is able to get Scuttle Crab and at least have some vision of the river. And up top here, you can see these guys trading back and forth a little bit. Biopanther doing a good job of activating his Haymaker right as that fear is ticking down. That is one advantage of playing set into a champion like Nocturne. You know exactly when the hard CC is going to activate, so it's pretty easy to time your shield and absorb all that. But we've got a four-man dive on the menu here in bottom lane. Pentanet looking for the first blood. Pabu will make his way down here. Decoy's going to be drumming the aggro. Santos left for dead right now as first blood goes over to Pentanet. They just start the dive before Zed even gets there. He's going to be a little sad. He should lose out in farm in doing so. But the overall picture, Pentanet recognize the window they have and look for the dive. It's nice to be able to see this from them, but instantly from Unicorns of Love, pick up the full top lane camps and also threaten Biopanther off his turret. So it's not as if they're just getting everything for free. Right, but you will see Pentanet now grabbing the first Drake of the game for themselves as well. Not as early as we saw RNG get the one in the previous game, but still seven and a half minutes. Good setup for yourself. If you can continue to control these neutral areas, specifically that bottom side river, yeah. might be able to stack further and further towards that soul. You can see now Boss having to go ahead and get on out of the enemy jungle now. Everybody's respawning. They're back on the map. You don't want to overcommit and get caught out and lose that advantage that you earned by getting that first blood in the bottom line. Absolutely. Unicorns of Love was trying to threaten, trying to say that that we can dive you top lane. In fact, they're still going to try. No Man's is going to be ready for this. Bio yeah. Panther. Bio Panther will walk no, in. No, Might walk no. way too close no. to a three-man goon squad. Bio Panther is seen. Steps away from the Sonic Wave, and they don't want to overcommit now. Yeah, they didn't even expect him to make the full travel over there, actually. Uh, but, you know, well protected. And also, Bio Panther, when he was sticking under turrets, so he didn't actually lose experience throughout all of that, was completely fine with a two-man dive. If two people dove him, a set? Yeah, you're set. It doesn't matter. You have Haymaker. You can just give yourself a 600 HP shield. It doesn't matter. Exactly. And also can outplay off of just, you know, the usual Flash E type of things that we've seen and failed dives in the past. Uh, but this is going to be a nice Rift Herald here for Unicorns of Love. So they pivoted their bot lane vision up towards top side really effectively. 
Yep, they'll secure that one for themselves. Bio Panther on the losing end of a trade here against Boss. Goes for the E, doesn't find it anyway. Even if it hit, there was a spell shield there, so it's actually better for him that it didn't hit him. As Decoy and Chaz will continue to work together here. Decoy clearing out some of the vision. Chaz staying close enough in case they try to punish him. And with Pabu back here in the bottom side river, he'll be able to secure yet another Scuttle Crab for his team. Still slightly behind his opponent in yeah. terms of farm but honestly not far enough for it to matter. Yeah, and speaking of behind, you're right, because Lodic has been playing a lot of respect to Pendant that had full vision bot side. Now they're playing. Okay. Oh, Decoy's got the taunt. Now we got ourselves a fight here. Lodic falling back a little bit with Santos taking the damage on the front line. Pentanet backing away. They do not want to stick around so long if their opponents can collapse in time. No Man's is here. He's ready to go. Sonic Wave, will there be a resonating strike? No, there will not. Ananasic knows that he would be far too far ahead of the rest of his team and would just be signing his own death warrant. Yeah, absolutely good decision from Pen and Ed to just back off there. You're not playing for anything. Dragon is so far off and also, uh, you know, Unicorns of Love are just getting position on you. They even had Nocturne roam up from top lane to mid lane just to be there for the 5v4 potentially. So Pennant saw that, we're saying, no, no, we're backing away. Good decision from them ultimately. Both mid laners still 0-0 zero, zero, and 0 here this game. You pointed out how Chaz, despite the fact that he wanted to be part of the play in the bottom lane, wasn't quite able to rotate down there in time. We'll see which one of these two can come online sooner. Pabu back here in the bottom lane now. Decoy's going in, lands the taunt. Santa's buffers through part of that as the spear flies out, but he dodges away from the damage. Yeah, it is very difficult to find a kill on towards the Nautilus. It's completely different if the Nautilus is trying to hook the Galio in. But also, if you're just trying to straight up set up for a lane gank there or a gank in that position, not going to happen. Okay, we've got both junglers hovering around the mid lane, seeing if maybe their mid laner can bait the opponent into a bad spot here. Ananasic hanging around. Remember that Zed, while he does have some evasive maneuvers, is still easier to kill than Vlad would be. And power transfusion ticking down, so he won't be able to heal up there with that one. Chaz and Pabu. Trying to defend here against Shelly, who should get the charge off, no problem. No Man's gets one extra Q off on Pabu, but fully retreats there using the Ghost just to make sure they don't get punished. Yeah, not the best use of Rift Herald. You're not really getting anything off that. Dragon's a minute and 30 away. I'm understanding, like, even if you're, even if it's timing out, you would probably want to still be able to use it on the side lane so you can get more turret plates a little bit more safely. But, you know, getting gold on towards No Man's was the idea. Had to walk away, so that's going to be a lot of gold on towards the 6 pocket. And Boss just goes ahead, backs all the way up. Bio Panther will be left to clear out those last couple of minions. Pabu was there just in case Boss randomly decided he wanted to go for a trade. But, of course, there's no reason to make that decision, so it doesn't happen. Right. Prowler's Claw, done for Chaz. So more gap closing, yeah. more <laughs> stickiness to the chosen target, and more damage amp when he goes in. Multiplicative damage amps, Raz. You use your ulti for one, you use the Prowler's Claw for one, you got damage on top of damage. You ain't getting away. Uh, that's a lot of DPS that Lodic has to really worry about. And if we're just talking about lethality items, Lee Sin picking up the Eclipse in the jungle. It's that highlight Lee Sin play. So if they find somebody, especially the Nidalee, who doesn't have stopwatch just yet, he going to be a victim. Oh no, Lodic's oh. in a pretty bad position. Praetis going in, but Praetis now in a bad spot on a Nasik looking for the damage onto him, but the exhaust is there, and here's your ulti! Praetis picks him up, but now Boss has come in. He's got one kill in return, it's a one for one so far, making a two for one in favor of Pentanet, who are seriously fighting for their lives here in this group, and I'm loving to see it. No Man's now looking to see if there's an angle here to defend. Chaz going after him in the 1v1, we'll see if he goes any further for that one. Prowler's Claw, No Man's flashing over the wall to stay alive. Has Empowered Transfusion ready. Heals up just a little bit from the Hemo Plague. Back here in the bottom lane, it's Santos going in. Finds the dredge line on the Bio Panther. As now Decoy has to rotate back down to the bottom lane, maybe to save him. Nope, it's set, man. He's tanky enough. And Pentanet, not only do they win the trade two for one, but they now will be able to grab themselves their second trade. It's happening, Cap. Pentanet in a must-win game are doing it on their picks. It's the Zed, it's the it's the Samira for Praetith that is doing so well here. And even though, you know, take a look at this one, it looks so contentious. Mm -hmm. But it's the Galley ultimate that comes through and they double down a Warren's Ananasic. And even though Boss gets a flash in execution there, you're still in a very bad spot. So great trade yep. from Pentanet. And they had Dragon, uh, the Vladimir who's still scaling up, is still holding out the mid lane, is not gonna be a part of that fight. So Unicorns of Love, they have a great composition as the game goes on, but they're playing on Pentanet's terms, and it's not them their second dragon of the game. Yep, and 
it's an ocean soul now. Nice. Because when I saw the first Drake being infernal and then the emblem for the second one showing mountain, you know that the soul then has to be the ocean or the cloud, and pretty much everyone would want it to be ocean in that situation. So for Pentanet, this feels really good that you've invested in this Drake control early on, and you have a very valuable soul now to continue playing for with the lead that you have so far. The question I'm going to pose to you, Raz. Hit me. One and a half thousand gold lead. Is that good enough 14 minutes into this game against a composition that has scaling like a Vladimir and like a Kaisa? I don't think so, but it's more so. Oh, my oh God. Adonastic's going in, but he's taking a lot of damage on the way there. <laughs> Kratith nearly kills him. That is not the angle he was looking for. That was definitely a drive through in and out. You need to get it out of there fast. <laughs> Well, No Man's is now going to find himself caught. CC's coming out, turns into a blood puddle, and now he's going to be a different kind of blood puddle. Splattered all over the ground. Nice kill for Pentanet. Unicorns of Love are the ones that set up for the play. It's Pentanet that finish it, and they're looking for a dive towards top lane, so Unicorns of Love have to peace out. Okay, Pabu now getting punished here a little bit. Uses the stopwatch to buy himself a moment longer. Chaz now backing up too. Pabu continues the retreat. Pentanet has four bodies up here in this top lane. Bio Panther will be left in the bottom side to defend against Boss in the split push. But the first turret of the game is about to drop, and it's about to mean a lot of money in Pentanet pockets. Incredibly awkward for Unicorns of Love. The setup felt very intricate. Mm -hmm. Unisic was definitely expecting to get a good kickoff uh, to set up his team. Didn't happen. No Man's didn't get the play. and Didn't get the memo, that is. And so he ended up really just falling short there. And now this is going to be Rift Herald. Second Rift Herald for Pennant that's actually been putting in a lot of damage on towards bottom lane turret and can actually put that through mid, get priority through mid, go towards bottom lane and net two turrets for themselves. A really good start for Pennant here. Okay, so now the problem is, Raz, that question that I asked you earlier is uh -oh. completely worthless. Yep. Because one minute later, now I'm going to ask it again with the new details. 3,000 gold, 15 minutes in. Is that good enough? I'm an on-field reporter, and I'm saying it's looking pretty good. <laughs> okay, all right. So that was the difference that we needed. We needed to have Pentanet find another one of those good sequences, find some more success, and they do it in the top lane by shutting down Unicorn's playmaking and then turning it right back against them, taking down that first turret for themselves, and Pentanet are feeling great about the current state of the game. Four to one, two minutes until that next Drake spawns. This is the point where they start having to answer it for the side of Unicorns of Love. You do not want to let Pentanet have have that third Drake 18 minutes in the game and spend the next 15 minutes answering each and every one. Yeah, because Pen and Ebb has been grooming up really well. Uh, grouping up, that is. Uh, and, and their composition, the core of the comp, is set Galio engage. So I don't care who's your frontliner. If Nautilus is trying to be the primary engager, and he's gonna be he's gonna be being sent straight in towards the Kaisa and the Lee Sin. So the start of these fights are very clear and very easy go buttons for Pentanet. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be unicorns of love that needs to be creative. Thankfully, they have Nocturne side lane. So if they try and put Nocturne on towards the side lane and Chaz is there, they can obviously like look for a play on him. They, and now that he has teleport in about five seconds, they can use Nocturne Ultimate, TP on towards the play on top side, and catch Pentanet off guard. These are the type of things we need to see. How do we feel about the Zonia's Hourglass Rush? from Pabu. I know there's been plenty of discussion in the past about mythic item selection for Nidalee, but Pabu has decided to pump the brakes on that a little bit, go for the playmaking potential of that permanent stasis instead. How do we how do we feel about this, Raz? Uh, hit that one more time, because I was looking at your boy Popo's question or point more so on just liking to see Chaz on the Zed to send it for the team. So I was, I was focused I on I purposefully that didn't read that one because it said send it so many times. <laughs> I'm trying to give Quick Shot a break, man. So the question okay, I hit me. Okay, the question that I posed is Nidalee delaying mythic item yes. for stops for fully completed hourglass rush as opposed to just sitting on stopwatch using it once and then waiting a little bit later. Is this the right call for that extra playmaking and aggro drop potential as opposed to the strict power of a myth? I think so. We're seeing a lot of skirmishes. So even if stopwatch is to be, uh, you know, was if you're just holding on that. You're getting through so many fights. There's a second fight. You're not going to have that. Here's another play, though. Okay, no man's losing half HP. Ananasic looking for maybe an opportunity to kick somebody in, but there's just no angle here. 
Boss is ready. Everybody else is here and ready to go. No Man's having no Hemo Plague. That's a pretty big team fight tool not available. You lose the damage amp, you lose the healing. Decoy goes in, finds two with a taunt. Nice! Face Breaker on to four. Holy set! Lodic's gonna be taken down first. Bio Panther grabbing the kill. Adonastic dead next. It is three unicorns in the dirt. Endangered species about to go extinct. Goodbye, unicorns of love. Goodbye, Santas. He's trying to just hop away. Pabu jumps in for the auto attack five for nothing call it an ace for pentanet bio panther is the boss in this game that was the sexiest set ultimate of a lifetime for man set up to for this team to just go straight in there and nocturne he saw a place that he tried to salvage it go straight on towards praetith had shield bow shield so he could live it and get the kill so the new axe effect replay here where it's all about uh, Bio Panther getting that setup and an insta kill Ooh. on Lodic, like we said at the very beginning of the game, this is what Pentanet needs to succeed, and they did that and more. Holy cow, how does a man got two fists and breaks four faces all at once like that? And then Pabu just jumps in, doesn't need a skill shot. The dude has 12 HP. Flash for the auto attack, take him down. Look at the excitement behind the scenes. You love to see it. This is Pentanet. Give him the guns, baby, give him the guns. Pentanet is here to play. Remember, if they win this game, they then have a chance to earn themselves that second place spot if they beat RNG. Mm. But on the much higher likelihood that then they lose to RNG, it's a tiebreaker between these two teams again. And man, Pentanet is making this one Fun to watch. And this is where you do need to take a step back if you're unicorns of love. <laughs> like after that play. Uh, and Ubisoft, of course, giving us finger guns and wearing. He wears sun to really set things up in a way that lets them play the game that they want to play, right? Yeah, and so I love that from Pennanet. I know a lot of people meme them. They even have their own track being uh, just hold on, we're going home from Drake, right? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> they play all of this, but like the meme lords. They they meme. They have fun with it, and and, and they also are ultra confident. It's not like they're going to be broken by the community raining nonsense on them, or especially or like the games being so one sided when they go up against an RNG or the previous game versus Unicorns of Love. <laughs> they know what they can do better for the next game, and they adapt from their usual picks so they're not changing anything uh, right. at least from like their identity perspective they're just saying we need to be aware that we need more engage options and if we're losing oh my god okay Nice kick coming out from Ananasic, but there's your Zonias. Pabu's staying safe for now, but he's got to fall back. Boss is ready to join. TP coming in. Shut down over to No Man's. That's the second kill of the game for the Unicorns of Love with a good punish on the enemy jungler. There we go. That's the play I wanted to see from Nocturne. Shut the lights out, teleport right in there. So even though the team was uh, around the area, you know, mostly playing through mid lane, they had a great window to get the kill on towards Pabu and stop the progression that Pentanet has had this game. Okay, Santos now doesn't want to walk too much further forward than what he already is. Boss will clear out a couple of wards in the bottom side river. Three minutes, Raz. Three minutes is how long the Unicorns of Love have to find themselves some sort of stability, some sort of footing here in this game. Because after three minutes, they must fight for the Ocean Soul. And if you thought this game was difficult now, it will become much more so if they give that away 24 minutes into the game. Yeah, and for everybody out there, the thing that you've seen all split long, all year long, honestly, is, is this the effectiveness of having soul point. You don't have yes. to play for your fourth dragon. For Unicorns of Love, that first dragon is useless. It doesn't do anything for them. It just prolongs the game. Where Pennanet can say, okay, if they have set up first, let's play towards Baron. Let's force them to walk into our Baron setup. And then Unicorns of Love are going to pray into what they've been praying into the entire game. So I want Pennanet to be, once again, confident with the setup that they've had. Even if there are stops within the game where Unicorns of Love are finding picks, doesn't mean too much. You still have, with uh, two minutes left towards Dragon, if you don't have the setup on Drake, just set up topside, and Unicorns of Love will still come towards you. I mean, League of Legends is a game where very small advantages can balloon into much greater things, right? And yes. so when you look at a very low-risk, high-reward situation like a 3-0 to zero Drake lead, 
it can mean so much in so many different ways. You can split push while they have to take the Drake. You yeah. can go for the Baron while they have to take the Drake. You can set up the whole map state while they have to take the Drake. There's a lot of options for Pentanet, but the only option for Unicorns of Love is do not let them have that soul. And that's the name of the game here. 80 seconds from now, Lodic now taking the red buff, so he'll be ready for the fight. And if I'm looking at everybody on Unicorns of Love, I can see that we've got the Proto Belt plus a stopwatch for No Man. So we really need to see Vlad be able to get in there. That was another big problem with that last team fight they had in that bottom half of the river is the fact that No Man's got caught out a little bit beforehand, had to use the Hemo Plague to stay alive, and they didn't have that for the team fight. And even taking a look at just the itemizing as well, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of Grievous Wounds, which is necessary. Yes. Vladimir hasn't been an hasn't had much of an impact this game, but this is when he starts shining. 25 minutes, you know, when we get to the next dragon, which is happening right now with 23 minutes on the clock, uh, two items on towards Vladimir. He just got his Zonias. He's going to be willing to fight now. If you have that, cut down that healing, he's definitely going to be, uh, you know, having issues not only walking towards dragon. Is he going to get chunked out by Nidalee and all these things? But definitely when the fight actually ensues. Yeah, the best time to buy Grievous Wounds against the healing champions is before they're unstoppable and yep. you recognize that you need it. Keep them down before they truly rise to power when you're trying to deal with these guys who are going to regenerate their entire health bar. But now, the Unicorns of Love must answer Pentanet here at this fourth Drake. Santos will be the furthest up so far. He's the point man. Ananasic off on the flank here. They'll need a really big kick if they want to make something extreme happen. Pabu's not the target you can go in on. As soon as he sees you fly Flying in onto a resonating strike. He can instantly press that stopwatch, get that Zonia's. Decoy's deciding to go in, tries to get the taunt, but won't find it. That's his flash. It's a pretty big team fight tool. Pentanet spending that one. More control wards being placed down by the Unicorns of Love. Chaz will remain there in the pixel brush. Santos losing half HP. Santos is about to be out of the picture. Boss will be your next target here. Pabu with the first kill of the fight. You got Bio Panther buying some time here in a 1v3. Why on earth y'all trying to kill Set? That's not the guy that you're going to have any sort of effective DPS against. Now you've got Pentanet with control over the Drake Pit. A 5v4, and the enemy team trying desperately to fight against this. There's your Vladimir ulti. There's your team fight coming in. Into the back line goes Lodic. Prey to grabbing the kill onto Boss. Now with a shutdown coming out, Chaz will fall. Both carries dead on the side of Pentanet. Is this how the Unicorns are able to fight back? Pabu is still here. Ananasic has no smite. Pabu also waiting for the cooldown on his. Another pool comes out from No Man's. Using that stasis, staying alive a little bit longer, but Bio Panther with a perfectly Get timed it. haymaker. Ananasic goes in. Ananasic goes back to the spawn platform. It is a team fight on an ocean soul for Pentanet. What an expanding brain from Pentanet throughout the entire fight, how well played that was because when it was Unicorns of Love fighting to get vision, just trying to split up, so forcing Pentanet's hand, it was set. It was Bio Panther that got the flash off Santos, ended up meaning that they get the kill later on, and just seeing as this fight plays out, Bio Panther plays this one out so fantastically. Great fight overall from Vladimir and Lodic, but Lodic doesn't have much support on the back half, ends up dying. You're right, two carries did die from Pentanet, but they recognize if they played around the timers of the Galio taunt, that they can still get that and a perfectly timed set W to, null to nullify No Man's. Because if he stayed a second longer, he had the uh, uh, you know empowered Q to get back HP. So they needed to get that perfectly, and he did it. Bio Panther now going in. Stride Breaker, Face Breaker, good by Lodic. Praetith takes the kill, and with the enemy 80 carry dead, Raz. You smell that? <laughs> Smelling like chicken in the baron. Get oh, that man. Oh, this Let's smells go. like a baron play, my friend. And we've got Pentanet immediately over to the big purple worm, daring unicorns of love to come stop them. Bio Panther knows his team has plenty of damage to take the objective without him contributing, so he will run interference, trying to keep everybody away. Ananasic, that's the guy that you really have to keep away from here. Bio Panther's going in, using the stride breaker. Chaz comes over the wall trying to deal with him. Ananasic jumping into the pit now. No man's going to be taken very low. Baron down to about 1,300. Boss grabbing the shutdown there, but Baron Nasher goes over to Pabu and Pentanet just cleans everybody up. Oh man, I was concerned because once that light shuts off, Praetith was dealing with multiple people that it was just way too hard for Unicorn to clean up. And that coin toss that we saw from Baron, it's Pabu that nets it. Baron for Pentanet and they're chasing them down.
Chaz will not let Santas away from this one. And unfortunately for the Unicorns, since it took so long for Santas to die, your death timers are horribly desynced now. Santas will not be back for another 15 seconds after on a Nasik. They're still pushing towards two different lanes. Biopanther will take out the tier two in top. The rest of the team's gonna take out the tier two in mid. Holy moly, Pentanet is here to keep fighting for that spot in the next stage. I think too many people were focusing on the, the top, you know, the RNG in this group. And not a lot of people were talking about Pentanet versus Unicorns of Love going back and forth. And it's Pentanet that's coming and getting this one back in a must-win game. Take a look at this. Praetith is down. I'm concerned. But it was the Baron that was picked up by Nidalee, the shutdown on towards Boss, and the chase down on Ananasic. That was just a clean sweep from Pentanet because they knew if Unicorns of Love are looking for the fight, don't switch targets. Consistently take the fight because you are much farther ahead gold-wise. They win it and they have Ocean Soul, they have Baron. They can really play this one out and finish it. This game has been such a diffy in the jiffy too. Eight, one, and five for the Nidalee of Pabu. While Ananasic, the Lee Sin, one, four, and three. This is not a champion that feels super great to play from behind. And Unicorns of Love feel like there's just practically no way back into the game at this point, barring a major error from Pentanet. Decoy jumps forward, won't quite be able to find any lockdown on anyone just yet. The remaining tier two turret here in the bottom lane will fall. Boss on Anasik, Santos, they can't do anything about this. And you've got Bio Panther pushing up mid lane as well. The classic 4-1 Baron split, bring those waves in, smash them into the turrets, get as much pressure everywhere as you can. Praetith will step up and take pot shots at the turret whenever we can. Nice use of the W there to block the dredge line. But now Decoy's going in. They decided it's time to fight. Santos runs away. They've almost got the turret out of the picture. They'll take it down now. Decoy staying alive. On an outtake, the first one to die. Boss going to be killed off next. It's Reset City, baby. Double kill over to Chaz, and that will do it. Do some sit-ups underneath that turret, baby. Get them ab workouts in there. Pentanet stays alive and guarantees himself at worst a tiebreaker to move on to the next stage. That's some sick ad warp out because you ain't done yet. There are still games to play and it feels like Pentanet are all warmed up. Holy moly, what a show! Coming out from the LCO representatives, man. Remember, this is a team. Their region dissolved. So much of their players left. And the players that remain formed this squad. They won the region. They made it here. And now they strike back. They even up the score against the Unicorns of Love. What an awesome show from Pentanet here in this fifth game of the day. You've been asking me a lot of questions, Cap, so I'm going to ask you one. All right, what do you got? What do you got? Who's going to be the one going home? You know, we talk about that song a lot. But it feels like Pennanet are the ones sending the message over to Unicorns of Love and you're presenting the team and the excellent bow. What's your answer? What are you feeling Man, like? I'm a believer.